Hey Potters! I am going to show you how to make a bee cup and with that you're going to learn some new skills. First of all, I'm going to show you how to cut your clay off the block in order to use the extruder. So this is our extruder here. Um, this is a new bag of clay. You want this clay to not have any air in it, so whatever you're using or however you're using it, um, if it's not out of the bag, you want to wedge it up to get rid of that air. So in this case, this whole big thing is not going to fit in this tiny tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half, and then I'm going to cut it in half maybe even a little bit less than half again. I wasn't very even there, <clears throat> like so. So of course, put that clay right back in the bag so it doesn't get dried out. And then on to the extruder. All right, so an extruder is what you would know as like a Play-Doh machine that you would use to like make spaghetti when you were younger, same, same concept. Um, it has this big arm here that we kind of keep, keep to the side when we're not using it. Otherwise, it sticks out and people run into it. So you're going to take this arm out and this hoop thing, I'm sure that's the technical term, goes over the top here. And we're just going to set that aside for right now. Just going to kind of hook it on there. And then this twists off, and there's a hole there. Now we need to put a die in here, and we have this box here of dies. Um, we usually keep this in the bottom of the guest cabinet. So in here is a whole bunch of different shapes. Um, and for this one, we're going to use this size, if you can see that. Um, but there's, there's lots of different shapes. You can get really creative. This one does a whole bunch at once. But this is the one we're gonna use for this project. I'm gonna put a washer in here too. So I'm first gonna put this washer in there. And then I'm gonna put that die in there and kind of make sure that it's centered like so. And then put that right back on there, okay? Now this is over to the edge. I'm gonna grab my clay and I'm gonna hope that I cut it so that it fits down in there, okay? So, mostly fit in there. And now, you have to be careful that you don't pinch your fingers here, okay? So, just, just a fair warning. I'm gonna lift this up, and I need that to go in to the extruder. All right, you ready for this action? So, you lift up on the handle, pull down, lift up on the handle, pull down, you can really get some good leverage and check that out. Here it comes. And you can keep doing that until it totally runs out. That is the super awesome extruder. It's really fun until you clean it out and you must clean it out for the next person. So this is how you clean it out. You're gonna put your hand back here on this silver Part, and you have to work this back up. So I'm moving this silver part up and this up. Silver part and you just kind of walk it back up. This is where you really need to make sure that you're not going to pinch yourself back there. And you're just going to kind of do everything in opposite. So this goes up, hang on to it, and then eventually that will just come out. You can take this totally off and then you want to go over to the wedging table not right here where I am, and you're gonna peel all this clay off and take a sponge and wipe this all down. You're gonna take this part off, and this is where quite a bit of clay, like you just, you can't get it all extruded out. So I'm gonna push here to get that to come out. <clears throat> Again, I would do this at the wedging table, so I push that out. Get your die and your washer. Go clean these off. And then this is just, you can just use this to throw with or put some more in. Um, just make sure 
that if you're not using it right away, you put it back in your bucket. And then you're gonna go take these over to the sink and clean these out. Now this is the part that gets mi missed. You're gonna get a rib, probably, well, a, a credit card, key card, works pretty well. Um, and you're gonna put your hand up here and you have to scrape. There's a whole bunch of clay that gets stuck to the walls of the extruder. And you can look down and see what kind of situation you have going on in there. And you have to scrape all that clay out. If you don't scrape all that clay out, it's gonna dry. And the next person that uses it is gonna have like dry, crusty, crusty clay all over their extruded pieces. So please make sure that you clean all the parts and then especially clean out um, this two part. All right, so experiment with this. You can obviously use it to build things, but it's really fun to use to add things on to your throne pots. And so think about how you can use the extruder um, beyond this project. According to your project plan, you guys are gonna make at least four of these. Uh, you are going to donate four, and then um, I would love for you to make some extras that you can take home and use in your own garden. Um, so here are the steps. We have our extruded pieces, and this, you know, it's kind of long here. And we are going to cut these in four inch lengths. So there's my first one. Here's my second one. These rulers can be found over in the glazing area um, on the pegboard. All right, so here we go. How you make these is you're gonna take one end and you're gonna roll it. But we only wanna roll it so this tip is a little bit sharper, okay? We do not want to make this part any thinner, okay? And we don't even wanna make this too thin because you know, once clay uh, dries and then gets fired, uh, it becomes quite fragile. So all I did was just a little bit, hold my hand at an angle like so and, and roll just that one part. And then here, we're gonna hold it in our hand and we're gonna kind of press this top to make the top wider. So I'm holding that straight in my hand and I'm slowly pressing the top. So it's starting to kind of look like a, a nail. So I'm pressing that top. So this would be what it should look like now. So you're gonna take the end of a Sharpie, hold this, cause you don't want, you don't want um, it to get bent. You know, try to keep this as straight as possible. Bending it back and forth is gonna make it weak. Um, and the more you do it, it'll make it weaker. So we wanna just really protect that. We're gonna take this sh Sharpie and we're gonna place it in the middle and we're gonna press down. I'm pressing down, let's see, like the size, the thickness of a pinky. So I'm gonna press down and then I'm gonna roll this. Now, when I roll this, I don't wanna roll it so much that this gets really thin. We don't want any part of our, our B cup to be super thin. We kind of want it all to be like pretty durable. And part of your criteria, it says for it to be um, structurally sound and not having it be too thin anyway, anywhere is part of that. Now, right now, with that said, right now this rim looks pretty chunky. We're not gonna make it really thin, but we are going to just press that rim together. Again, not really making it thin, but making it appear thinner. So see how now it appears thinner? Now, these look pretty big right now, but they will shrink. Our clay shrinks about 11%. What, what the bees like is um, for them to kind of look like flowers. So 
once these dry, we're going to paint the, the insides. We're not gonna paint the outsides, but we're gonna paint the insides. So you could choose to leave that um, like stronger indent there to make the middle of the flower, um, or you could kind of smooth that out more. Um, that's kind of up to you. Also pay attention to how I haven't used any water. The less water we put on clay, actually the better. Um, even if I want to smooth some of this out, I'm just going to use the Sharpie to kind of smooth over some of those cracks. That one's done. And then I'm going to show you how to stamp your initials on each one. So we have these old printer press letters. We have the whole alphabet and they're all labeled. So be very careful to keep them nice and organized and you're going to find your initials. So your first and last initials. And I would say, I would recommend trying to find the smallest ones. Um, make sure they're reversed. So my first and last name, well, gosh, that's tricky with the camera, huh? Well, make sure they're, re <laughs> make sure they're reversed. I'm just gonna practice here. Oh, see, even I did that wrong. How does this work? Nope. So that one's right. This one's that. That's why you have to practice, people. Okay, there we go. And there's my DG. If it would help you, you could go get a piece of masking tape and tape those two together just for the project um, and keep them with you uh, until the project's over. So I'm gonna figure out some place to stamp these. I think I'm gonna stamp mine right here. Kind of rock it back and forth. And there you go. There's my stamp. This is called a mark in pottery. Um, later on, you guys are gonna be making your own personal marks, but for now, we're just gonna use these. Just to review some of the things um, that you can double check. This, this thickness right here did not change from the part that was extruded, okay? and only this bottom like inch and a half is what got um, rolled out into a skinnier part. And then even though this appears, this rim appears to be thinner, it's still quite um, thick. So double check and um, work on making your next one. You want to be careful to not touch it too much. Um, I want to do this in real time so that you can see how long it takes. If you touch it too much or for too long, your clay is going to start cracking and you don't want your clay to start cracking. Here, if it starts to crack a little bit, I'm just kind of pushing it back together. Another thing to pay attention to is when you go to put your Sharpie in, you wanna make sure this is a circle, and then you wanna make sure that this Sharpie goes in the middle. Otherwise, your cup part will be a little bit off, like not quite symmetrical, which is also fine because things in nature are organic and that is beautiful too. Also handmade things aren't always perfectly symmetrical. So I have a little bit of cracking there. I'm just gonna take my finger and try to smooth that out. And if that doesn't work, you can talk to me and I'll give you some more suggestions. A little cracking there. I'm just taking the your your fingerprints actually work really well. It's kind of like sandpaper for wet clay. There are my four. Um, I'm gonna make a couple more that I can take home. 
we're gonna let these dry and then we will work on underglazing them. All right, so our B cups are dry. Um, these have not been fired yet, so they are at their most fragile state, um, but they will absorb the underglaze really nicely. So we are gonna underglaze these um, at this stage and then that will reduce the amount of times so we need to fire them. Um, for this project, we're gonna use a limited palette. This is the palette uh, that we'll be using. So we have two different values of yellow orange, uh, two different values of green, and two different values of purple in addition to black and white. So make sure for the four that you're gonna turn in that you're using this palette. Uh, any additional ones that you do uh, to take home, you can use whatever palette you'd like. We're gonna wanna use really small brushes. And I want to talk to you about flat brushes versus round brushes. Flat brushes are really nice. That would be, let's see, this one and this one. Flat brushes are really nice for laying down, um, let's say background colors or on big areas. Round brushes are nice for detail work, um, you know, lines, dots. Flat brushes can also be good for like blending and shading in the background. So make sure that you're using appropriate brushes for what you're doing. You wouldn't want to use, you know, like a teeny tiny brush like this, a teeny tiny round brush, to do your whole background. You would want to use a bigger brush to do the background and then maybe a round brush to do like some petals and some blending on those petals, okay? Um, feel free to also look up some images on your phone um, if you'd like yours to be a little bit more realistic. That is not a requirement, um, but if you want it to look a little bit more realistic, you could look up flowers um, on your phone. So we have these palettes in the glazing area that you can use. When you're getting your underglaze, um, make sure that you shake it up. And then we're only gonna get like a pea size of underglaze. And you don't have to get every color. You might not be using every color. Um, I'm kinda, I'm gonna start with those two. Sometimes I even like to use that area up there. <clears throat> now you can always come back and get more if you need more. When you're using underglaze, you want to put on three to four coats. So again, I'm using this flat brush to put on the base coat. Now we're only going to add color to this inside area. We are not putting any color on the outside area. And that's for two reasons. When we fire these, we, we don't want anything on the outside so that we can fire them like this. Also, it's gonna make the whole um, body of work uh, look cohesive. So even though we're all doing um, different designs, they'll all have that cohesiveness of not having the outside done. So you'll see as you're doing this that it dries very quickly because that clay is gonna soak up the underglaze pretty quickly. You wanna put on even coats, you know, don't have puddles in places. Let it dry, you know it's dry when it's not shiny anymore. Now this is just for the base coat. Once I start to, um, if you want to blend and shade, um, you'll want to work when it's a little bit wetter. I'm gonna add some of this purple. I think that might be nice for blending and shading too. So that was my second coat. You do have to pay attention to how many coats you're putting on. And these are generous coats. I'm not blending them or rubbing them out um, really thin. You want nice, generous, generous coats. 
If you don't put on three to four coats, once this has been fired and glazed, um, it'll look really, really streaky and kind of amateurish. Especially with these light colors, um, like these light greens and light um, oranges, you wanna make sure you have, I don't know, you could probably even go to five. So four to five. Um, if you put on too much, um, especially with dark colors like, like black and blue and dark green, um, that could actually be bad. They would, um, could actually start bubbling up. But with light colors, you're, you're probably pretty safe. Okay, so I put on five coats. And now I'm just gonna start playing. I'm gonna go in and see what happens if I start to mix the purple in here while it's still wet. Here's the thing, if you do something and you don't like it, you can kind of just paint over it. I think it was a little too wet to do that. I dab it on. And really this is about you guys getting to know the underglaze, playing around and experimenting. It can be as simple or as detailed as you want it to be. We have Q-tips over there. You could take a color. And if you wanted to, just go right in the middle. Use that Q-tip to make the middle of your flower. And I'm going to let that dry and then see if I can do some more details on it. <clears throat> Again, it does not have to be really detailed. And then I would suggest taking a sponge <clears throat> and just cleaning this edge up. This, oh, this would be um, part of your craftsmanship. You just want to make sure that that line is really nice and crisp. So play around, have fun, and see what you can come up with. All right, here we have my four. After you're done, just double check that you have met all the criteria. And then you're gonna go back and put them on the bisque cart. Before you wash out your palette, um, ask to see if there's anybody else that can use any of those colors. So pass it on to them, then go over and wash your brushes out in the sink. Wash your palette out if um, nobody else is using it and then throw your Q-tips away.